the London duo of Bicep is known for harmonizing British school of house, garage and disco into deep and emotional pieces. And today we will pay our respect by step by step demystifying one of their tracks. This track will be a bit of breakbeat, but there will be a lot of housey elements in it. Hence, we will start with the groove and the overall drums of the track. Nailing the drums is extremely important in this genre. Let's start with a kick. I have a kick like this. If you are looking for this warm, unlocked kick sounds, take a look at my Deviant Unlock Drums. If this was a house track, what we will do, just a four to the floor. But in this style, the kicks are a bit more relaxed and it could be really any pattern. When you are making breakbeat style drums, you want the snare and drum to talk each other. Try to find a pattern that actually works together with your kick. This is the way it was in the original track. Now we have a bit more lagging feel. You could even populate more. Possibilities are endless, but let's put the pattern that we have in the original track. Now, if this was a house track, we will keep the kick this way. But because it's a breakbeat track, we will actually play a lot with the groove of the kick. Especially with the placement of the kicks are very important. I would even suggest it doing it really manually. We are talking about lags like this. And if we do it like similar with the original track, you will see that look at this lagginess here and there and giving this really groovy feel together. We are already breaking the rule of house tracks, which is very quantized kick. I will apply similar groove to the snare, and together now they sound like this. I keep saying it a snare, but this is actually more like a rim shot than a snare, more cleaner sound. Now on top of that, we will get some type of minimal hat going on, really high pitch just to prepare this deep ambience that we are building. Two hi-hat sample here, the boat is exactly the same hi-hat. This is again from my analog drums. Again, we have quite a bit of groove on it, but there is a syncopation to their shuffling here. Let's take a listen. The slight EQ and ozone is just giving a bit more space or making a bit more stereo. And we need to support these close hats with kind of 16 groovy hat. Most of the time you are really deviating from the grid itself to give this grooviness. Really straightforward, quite dark, 16 hat. The open hat was really bright and the 16 hat is dark, so it is really easy to mix them together. Very simple. Of course, we are gonna side chain this from the kick. Already groovy enough to dance to. This brings us the a bit more confusing element in this track, which is the what I call the dirt hi-hat. So what's a dirt hi-hat? It sounds like this. It opens up, it gets longer, it gets dirtier, and it's really groovy. The velocity is changing a lot. We have a rack that I made here for creating this dirt in it. So two common methods of doing this. The first one is probably you have seen before at type of vocoder, you increase the bands. Original sounds very really kind of straightforward. And you open this up. And you can play with the release. Depending on the format that you're playing, it can get darker or brighter, like, right? Or if you bring dark format, one disadvantage of doing this this way is vocoder itself really resonates to different bands, a bit more artificial sound. Although people were asking me, what is the alternative of using vocoder? It is this method. Introduce a distortion. Now I have two channels. The first channel is the right channel. This is just audio. The second channel is the distortion channel, what I call the wet channel. What's happening here is the signal goes into a reverb, gets a bit splashy, a bit stereo. This goes into a very heavy distortion. I just use overdrive because overdrive is very, you can really crank it up overdrive. Do you see how the sounds less resonated compared to vocoder? You may wonder what is this button doing here? So this button is actually assigned or mapped the volume levels of the chain. The first one is 0 to minus 6 dB, so the original sound gets into the minus 6, and the second one is from minus infinity to, to 0. To the right, 
which makes it really wet with a lot of distortion. Very gritty sound. To the left, clean sound. So what happens that when you are playing the track, I would strongly suggest that you just click on record while these buttons are turned on. See that I kind of recorded my movement with the button here, simplify the envelope, giving this very groovy and distorted ambience to your hat sounds together. Isn't this just gorgeous? Now, because we have this nice splashy hi hats, we can emphasize it with the clap sample. Every start of two bars, we have this clap sound. Maybe with resonance on it so that you can hear it a bit better together with the kick. Take a listen how it helps. It's like a cherry on top, I will say. The drum groove here, this is our backbone for the track. Now we can add other things in it. And the first thing will be, of course, the bass. We will use a simple two notes. This is a very common technique. You just go for the root key and just one, two, three, four semitones down to give this dun dun. Now there's one important thing that we have to take a look at here. So I'm going to duplicate this and show you from scratch. This is a cat saw. It's from our Unlock Wave Table pack. It was kind of a saw toot. This is how it should be sounding. What I did, this is very important for this type of sound, is that you don't want your sub bass to be stereo and start phasing from each other. So what we did, we removed that. The main reason purpose for that is this is like a unison 4, unison 4 is a very stereo sound with two of these. And you remove the fundamental, ba -bum, and add a sub. Look at how stable sub is. And other things I'm facing a moon and on, but they don't care. This is one of the coolest things that you can do with this type of bases. And we have this dark grease base here. You can already feel this dark ambience that dragging you into the track. Other part of creating ambience is actually the drone. But drums are oftentimes done with the vocals in this genre. What I'm going to do, I have already example of this one in my previous videos, I will edit here. But this time I'm going to just use a contact instrument that's called Exhale. I really enjoy using vocal fills quite a bit. Things like this. In the notes part you have this. Mostly swells or one note vocals can be used to enhance the ambience. And then they have these loops. So that could be very nice for example for techno. Just create the ambience. They have also this slice version. Like playing a slice instrument, right? Giving you these four marker controls to quickly shape the sound that you are looking for. If you go to notes, for example. Really straightforward, hence there's the reason that I use the extend quite a bit. This one sounds like this. This ah uh, sound, right? Very common. If you want to download and take a look, I have a link below in the description. Any purchase that you make by using the link, I get a small percentage of it, just make it transparent. The main idea of these effects is really making it airy. You see this elbow boost on the high end, but the most important thing is there's a mid-side EQ and on the side mode, boosting a bit more to the sides to give this very stereo feel on top. And of course, side chain to the kick. Together they sound like this now. We really have now the backbone of the track. We had to just make our hook now, and the track is actually already 80% ready. All right, now I just put the rest of the track together. The most important thing over here is these paddleys, kind of a bicep sound. Simple chord progression. It looks like this. This is not a simple synth sound, unfortunately. You have to implement a couple of really good tricks on it. So if you go to modifications, you will see that there's an option that's called add envelope plus LFO. So this basically means that it's adding the envelope and the LFO together on the tuning of the both oscillators. So in this case, because we are only having the oscillator 2, that is only applied to this oscillator. So if I take it off, 
The LFO is applied on the cutoff, so we hear this cutoff movement, but there's no pitch movement. So when I put this on, let's exaggerate a bit. There is this initial movement, like initial envelope, and on top of that, the LFO movement. Let's bring this down to like a normal level. We have also this a bit delay in the LFO, so the LFO applied a bit less it being and then more, giving this really organic feel to the sound. And the other important thing are we are using this the bite, kind of having a movement on the low end of the sound, getting it feather. Right? But we don't want it that much, so this is something like this. And then of course we have our regular thing, cutoff filter opening up slowly with the envelope too, a bit resonance on top, so level 1, this one is still applied to the cutoff. And on top of that we have a bit glide, a bit vibrato. After this part we are just adding EQ to concentrate the sound. A bit reverb. And this side changes the vocal so that when the vocal comes in we are ducking the sound a bit. Last important thing is this echo chain here to pan around the sound. Most important thing over here is ducking and the wobble is activated, so it ducks when the origin sounds play and the wobble is a little bit to give tape feel. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save this preset and share below. And if you want more presets like this, I've just released my Diva Analog Bass preset pack. There are tons of really cool sounds like this in that. So take a look at that if you want to have these more analogish, really rich sounds. I think that preset pack will be the reference preset pack for Diva Bass sound. I spend really a lot of time on it. And then we have these high bells, very common sound used in the style. You can use any synthesizers, I'm using Diva, but you need to do very high pitched sound like soft toots. A lot of release, so this swells in on itself with a really nice decay, no sustain at all, giving a lot of play, reverb, and then chorus. This pushes the sound a bit on the sides, makes it a bit more ambient. And these effects are the most important one, the, it's the pedal. You can hear this distortion and growling and the noise on top of that, and then just getting super lows and having a super slow auto pan like the original track. And the vocals are just coming from the original track. Nothing there really important. And the one final cherry on top, I will say, is this drum room. When I listen to Origin Track, there is a lot of noise and distortion and dirt and so on. It mainly comes from this return channel. We are sending drums here, adding a slight reverb, and compress it, cut it, and distort the land side chain to kick. With that, sounds a bit clean. Wait. It introduces all this dirt that you will hear in this type of style. By the way, if you want to learn more on how professional producers make their tracks, we just had four producers one sample two weeks ago. I will put it here so that you can take a look.